I'll have to be honest with you, first thing I'm going to mention right up front is, is it's free. Uh, I, I like this, this, this service when, when it's free because, you know, you can tie up a lot of money in, in different services and from experience I found out that a, you, sometimes you can pay a lot of money and you, you may not be getting that much out of it. Good afternoon. Welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. Today is Wednesday the 22nd. We had the market moving lower here, uh, except for corn, which was unchanged on the day. But let's turn over to the Grain Hedge Trading Platform and see where we closed off the day. Corn unchanged, soybeans down 4.5 cents, and wheat in Chicago trading off a penny. One thing that traders are talking about, of course, is the cold weather moving throughout the Midwest and northeastern part of the U.S. For the most part, that does not seem to be threatening any of the winter wheat areas. It uh, doesn't seem to be slowing down planting progress here, uh, even though we have had some precipitation throughout the, uh, throughout the U.S. But for the most part, uh, no major weather concerns. Looks like we could continue to get some showers for the plains here continuing into next week. So that is very positive. Also on the news here uh, is, of course, the Iowa uh, situation where bird flu was detected. And of course, uh, in response to that incident, uh, Mexico has uh, limited and stopped all uh, imports of live birds and eggs from the state of Iowa. So the bottom line here is that though this may, uh, th the instances that have been detected uh, and, and the uh, birds uh, that have been destroyed as a result of it, uh, that may not necessarily have a material effect on, on feed usage. However, if we continue to see uh, instances of bird flu popping up, that could have significant impacts on feed usage here. Uh, when you look at the, uh, the 3.8 million birds that were affected there in that, that flock uh, in Iowa, uh, that lake makes up less than 1% of the overall uh, poultry there in the United States. So uh, not a huge concern, uh, but of course, if this continues to spread, if we continues to see, continue to see instances of bird flow, this could have an impact on, on feed usage. And of course, that makes grain traders a little bit nervous here. It's still too early to tell, uh, but it's something that you should definitely be keeping on your radar here going forward. Today was Wednesday, which means we had ethanol production out. We were up 6,000 barrels per day this week, uh, bringing total production up to 930,000 barrels per day. We did see stocks here for uh, ethanol up 697,000 barrels to 21.34 million barrels on the week. So stocks up, production up. And when you look at that uh, on, on this, this chart here, you'll notice each each green bar represents one week worth of activity. Uh, you'll notice that we're coming right into that season where we would typically start to see an increase in ethanol production, but really we've been trending down here since the end of the year last year. So um, though we are uh, well ahead of pace, uh, it seems as that the overall trend is down, but it was good to see a pickup in ethanol production here week over week. We are about 5.3% ahead of last year's production compared to a USDA estimate here. Uh, what they're implying we would see is around 1.3% increase over last year. So we are ahead of pace in production. Uh, it would be nice though, uh, especially seasonally, uh, we would typically start to see an increase. So do be looking for that. If we do not get an increase there, that would be something to keep on your radar here for corn. Keep in mind also, export sales are going to be released out here tomorrow. We're going to be writing about them in the morning commentary. Uh, but here are the expectations. Corn coming, uh, is expected to come in anywhere between 400 to 600,000 metric tons. Soybeans anywhere between cancellations of 100,000 metric tons to 150,000. And wheat between zero to 100,000 metric tons. So it's going to be interesting to see here. Last week we had uh, good export sales here for corn excellent export sales here for soybeans, but wheat, uh, not a very good performance. It's going to be important to see uh, positive news out here for wheat. Wheat has been, when you look at the price action for wheat, uh, all last week it was trading lower. We've kind of paused here for wheat. We haven't had any major move one way or another, kind of drifting a little bit higher here in what could be a consolidation move. It's going to be interesting to see how export sales come out here tomorrow and whether or not that'll be a trigger 
to start moving lower again. We'll have to see. Other than that, guys, that wraps up today's show. If you have any questions about what we talked about here today, please give the office a call. Our number is 877-472-4607. 